Right. Is this what Godot was talking about? Yeah. The trick locks. Now then, Iris. Please remove these at once. Um, Mr. Edgeworth? I'm afraid I can't. It... it's not possible for me. What? During the earthquake, when the cavern was in danger of caving in, Iris escaped. And I know that there was only one lock when I last came here. So you're saying that you can't undo the new locks? Yes. If only I was stronger. Edgeworth, how are you feeling? You look a little pale in the face. Like you're one to talk with your face all green. Mouse Edgeworth, go and get some air. I'll watch over the suspect. You go and get a grip on yourself. Don't be ridiculous, I'm... There's no telling what sort of mistakes you could make in your current state. Go and get some rest. That's your only concern now, Miles Edgeworth. Understood. I'll handle the investigation in the garden. You take care of things here. Edgeworth. He's got so much pride that he's probably off crying in the corner of the garden. Look, I'm pretty prideful, and if I have to do crying in a place that is not my private home and all that, I'm probably going to look for a bathroom or so. I'm not going to do it in the corner of a public place, because that would just put more attention on me. Pride is simply another trap that hinders us in our lives. Hark, who's talking? That said, one must have pride to be effective on their job. At any rate, it seems that this is where we part ways, Phoenix Wright. I'm going to stay here and see if I can't help solve these bothersome puzzles. I see. Well, thanks for your help. Now, do you mind if I ask you a few things, Iris? No, not at all. I'm pretty sure that showing her anything is going to be useless. Why did you make a run for it, Iris? I... I'm sorry. Oh! We're having a thunderstorm! Well, a small one. I heard the inner temple had been severely shaken by the strong earthquake we had. I... I was so worried. I just had to come and see. In other words, you didn't run away to escape the law. At least we're clear on that. I can't tell you how relieved I was when I saw the sacred cavern was alright, but... But what? Then I saw these chains here. I saw all these extra locks that someone had put on the cavern doors... Cavern's door, and... Who in the world would have done something like this? These trick locks are a sacred treasure of the Kuran tradition. There are hundreds of ways to set them. That's why only the person who set the lock can open it. And you aren't the one who set these locks? I don't think it's that simple, Francisca. When we were here, the first time, there was only one lock. But now, somehow, there's five of them. What does that mean? It means that someone wanted to secure the place even more. And they wanted to secure it before you got here, Iris. Presumably because they wanted to make sure Maya couldn't get out. This means that Iris can only open one of these locks. The first one. Yes, that's correct. What? Iris, try to think, please. Isn't there any other way around this? Well, like I said, there are hundreds of different ways to set these locks. I suppose if I went through every combination with each one, I could remove them. But... It will take time, won't it? Yes, about a day if I had to guess. A whole day? Well, that's better than leaving the locks in place. Will you do this for us? Sure, 
I'll do whatever I can. We've got to wait another day? Hang in there, Maya. You're going to have to call on your inner strength now. You know what, Iris? There's still one thing I don't quite get. And what might that be, Phoenix Wright? Aren't you busy doing the locks? Why are you still commentating? Not that I mind, just wondering. I think it's obvious. Iris, on the night of the murder, where were you? Please, Iris, don't give me that look. You told us that you were in your room at Hazakura Temple at the time of the incident. But you were seen that same evening at the inner temple. And then you were spotted at the scene of the crime in Hazakura Temple too. Being spotted at both Hazakura Temple and the inner temple, it's as if you were... Well, Iris, I think it's about time you told us the truth. I knew it. There's something going on here that we don't know about. I don't remember if I have every anything for her yet, so... I'm gonna move somewhere else. Let's check up on Edgeworth. The cops are still coming the place. They look pretty nervous. I'd be nervous too. It's got to be a tough job. Especially with someone giving you the evil eye the whole time. How could I have done that? Wow, I can't believe it's still bothering him. <laughs> Why does he get so upset about have phobia that renders him useless? He should just drop it! Hey, don't you dare run away! What do you want, Riot? What do I want? If you came here to laugh at me, then get on with it. Go on, laugh away! <sighs> I was ready to hug it out with him, but he's just the same prideful Edgeworth. Don't worry, Phoenix. You two just find a nice place somewhere on your own, and you can hug it out all you want. You went back to the Criminal Affairs Department, right? You said you wanted to look into something concerning Iris. Yes. And thanks to what I found, I was reminded of something terrible. You guys are putting a lot of effort into the investigation of the garden here, huh? There's a high chance this is the actual scene of the crime. That's why. You mean because of the writing in blood and the talisman in the snow? Exactly. As you know, those things couldn't have been planted here after the murder. But surely you didn't expect... Maya, do you? We have to treat everyone as a suspect. Maya as well as Iris. It's our job, right? So... I guess you still haven't gotten over your fear of earthquakes. No. Thankfully, my nightmares have stopped. But still, if the ground gives even the slightest tremor, I find myself short of breath. Seventeen years ago, when we were still blue When we were little school kids at the same elementary school... Edgeworth found himself in the middle of a murder. It all started with that big quake that hit the courtroom. Courthouse. Yes, I was stuck in the elevator with my father, who was a defense lawyer. We were deprived of oxygen and we passed out. That's when it happened. That single gunshot shattered my whole life. I lost everything that day, all because of that earthquake. My dreams, my family, and myself. It's been more than 17 years now. And that case was finally resolved three years ago, right? You think I don't know that? I was there! 
but it was such a shock. I never imagined I could be so wrong about myself in my life. I'm sorry, right? There's nothing else I can say. Not after you chose to become a lawyer for my sake. And not after you saved me. You're stronger than you think, so no more of the self-pity, okay? <laughs> there was something that bothered me about her from the moment we met. I felt like I had seen her somewhere before. Not somewhere. I felt like I had seen her in court before. So you went back to the criminal affairs department to look for her file? Yes. I checked over every case file I've ever worked on. And I was right. I had seen her face before, six years ago. Six years ago? It was my first appearance in court. And as cases go, it was my worst nightmare. Shouldn't that be worst? So, who is she? I'm sorry, right? I can't give that information away to a member of the general public. What? Why not? It might be the crucial piece of the puzzle that solves this case. The woman I knew was the daughter of a jewelry store owner. She had nothing to do with Iris and Hazakura Temple. And neither did the case. No. That woman is completely unrelated to this murder. It had nothing to do with the case? Eagle River! Eagle Mountain! Nah? You making the connection? The least we can say is that she lives close to a place where a kidnapping and later a murder took place. Unrelated? Yes, I can say that with complete confidence. You're wrong, Edgeworth. She's totally related to this case. I need to fill Edgeworth in. I need to explain the connection between Iris and that woman Edgeworth knew. I can't do that yet. Because I'm still missing something. Anyway, let's go back and talk to Bikini. I'm finally getting to the bottom of this case. I can count on Iris to break those locks, so I should try to gather more clues. From Sister Bikini, Edgeworth, Gumshoe, and Pearls. Did I just see lightning? It's weird that there's no one around all of a sudden. It sure gets quiet up here in the mountains when all when you're all on your own. Speaking of alone, I guess I should go check out the shack just down this path. Maybe I'll find Larry there sulking again. Fine if I have to go to Heavenly Hall. Oh, Mr. Nick. Pearls, what are you doing here? As in, what about Miss Sigmaya? Is she alright? Well, we don't know yet. Oh, I see. Hey, what do you think you're doing here, Nick? Larry? This is the loser's shack where losers get together to lose themselves. This is the what? We find comfort in each other's families, okay? Got a problem with that? Oh, Mr. Nick, Mr. Louise did a picture of me. That's... Great pearls. We're going to gather firewood now. We'll be cooking some half rotten potatoes over a miserable little campfire. So stay out of our way! I don't believe this. Why can't he try getting fired up over becoming a better man? No one believes a word I say anymore. Listen to me, Pearl. You don't want to trust this kind of guy, okay? He'll only let you down. Actually, I'm still missing stuff, so she is going to have a psych lock, but I can't really do anything with it yet. 
Larry, is there something you want to tell me about this picture? <laughs> I've got enough to say to you, Nick! My life's here now, with Pearl! Two nurses cooked potatoes together forevermore! What am I going to do with him? Alright then, what do you think about this picture, Pearls? I... I think it's really well drawn. I can't draw at all, so I think it's really amazing. See? Someone appreciates it! It's tough getting the flames to look like that, you know? It's supposed to be Sister Iris flying through the air, right? I love it. It's like a dream. A wonderful fantasy. Oh, no, no, it wasn't a dream. She really flew. I'm telling you, Iris really flew that night. But, Mr. Loris... <sighs> Not you, too. Please don't look at me like that, Pearl. Don't look at me like I'm some kind of nutcase, I beg of you! I guess this picture really is a representation of what Larry thinks he saw. So I was half asleep when I was there that night. But I was wide awake after the lightning struck! And I saw what I saw! It was exactly like I drew in the picture! And it looks like I don't have any choice but to take the sketch at face value. What's with the look of doubt on your face? Pearls? Y yes Mr. Nick? I've been meaning to ask you about the night of the murder. Where were you and what exactly were you doing when it all happened? I... um... I was just... Uh, I'm just a kid, you know? Uh, I'm sure it doesn't really matter what I was d d doing, does, does it Mr. Nick? Sorry, Pearls, but yes, it does. On the night of the murder, you were supposed to be in Miss Donim's room, reading a book together. But Miss Donim was murdered, and you, Pearls, were at the inner temple. Just what exactly happened that night, Pearls? I'm really sorry, Mr. Nick. At least she apologizes before she proves that she has a ton of locks that I have to get rid of. I know I'll be punished. What are you talking about, Pearls? My spiritual power. It has disappeared. What? Her powers have disappeared? What do you mean your power has disappeared, Pearls? It's... it's all over for me. A spirit medium who can't channel spirits is like a painter who can't paint. Hey! What are you looking at me for? Pearls, did you try to channel someone's spirit right here at Hasakura Temple? Tried but failed, perhaps? Way to go, Nick! You made her cry! That's... that was really cruel of you! Just as I thought. I'm going to have to break her psych lock to get the truth out of her. I wonder if Sister Bikini has gone back to the main hall already. I haven't seen Gumshoe around for a while, either. Maybe they're having a cup of tea together somewhere. I bet Gumshoe is Sister Bikini's type. Well, what's the damage? How's the sacred cavern? It looks like it survived. But we have a bigger problem now. I told Sister Bikini all about it about the five locks that were stopping us from getting inside the sacred cavern. But who could have done that? The only people who know how to set those trick locks are those of the Kurain tradition. We have Iris at the sacred cavern now, trying the best to open them for us right now. Actually, there's something I've been meaning to talk with you about, Sister Bikini. Yes, we were in the middle of a chat, weren't we? Yes, 
You were telling me how the Master of Courant disappeared 17 years ago. I want to know why Misty Fade has suddenly appeared at this temple. It was about a week ago when Mystic Elise, I mean Mystic Misty, arrived. After she showed me the talisman that proved she was the Master, she said, Someone is trying to destroy the Kurain tradition's main family line. I am here to put a stop to them. Someone was trying to destroy the main family line? There is only one heir to the title of Master at any time, and it's usually the eldest. That child becomes the new Master of Kurain, and her daughters the main family. All of the other mediums become branch family members, with no hope of controlling the clan. <clears throat> That's why nothing has changed throughout the history of the clan. One second! <coughs> I didn't want to cough directly into the microphone. I thought it would be rude. Branch families always have, and always will, plot to erase those of the main family line. Wouldn't it be easier for the Fae clan, then, to just simply give birth to one daughter? Or to one child, although it has to be one daughter, and then stop having kids? Just asking. Is the power of the Master worth this much bloodshed? You believe in the technique, don't you, Mr. Wright? You know its power is real. Yes, I do. It's been three years since I first met Maya. In that time, I've seen her channel the spirits of the dead plenty of times. During the Musk to Musk case. And during Maggie Bird's trial, too. Thanks to Maya, Mia's always on hand to help me out when I need her the most. The Kurain technique has made a huge difference to the world, you know. I mean, the ability to commune with the dead. That's true, psychic power, you know. Members of the tradition have always been there behind every important leader. Who wouldn't respect such a tremendous skill? I suppose so, but... With all that power and influence, I kind of expected you'd be really rich by now. Are you saying we're poor, Mr. Wright? You're very direct, aren't you? People don't believe in it anymore, you see. All because of one little mistake. A mistake? What mistake? DL6? It was 17 years ago. That's when everything came crashing down. All because of that incident. That incident? Is she talking about what I think she is? I'm sure the records still exist if you're interested. Locked up, of course. It was called the DL6 incident. That's the name of the file. The DL6 incident, huh? The DL6 incident. I know it well. I handled a related case just three years ago. Oh, that's right. So it was you who was the defense attorney on that case. A murder that took place 17 years ago. It, w it was the first time in the country's history the police ever used a spirit medium. The idea was to channel the victim's spirit to learn the identity of the murderer. And the medium who performed the channeling was Misty Fay, Maya's mother. Through Mystic Misty's channeling, the name of a certain man surfaced. Armed with that as evidence, the investigators were spurred into action. But that man... He was found not guilty, wasn't he? That's right. He was. And the case remained a mystery. In other words, we failed. It was the first case the world had ever seen the Kurhan tradition openly involved in. Openly involved? I thought it was a secret that they had used her. And then Grossberg blabbed and Red White got the information and sold it. 
it was all over the media. The public, the judiciary, the people of Kurhain village. Everyone judged her. Everyone said Mystic Misty's powers were a sham. And then she just disappeared, vanished while everyone still thought of her as a fraud. But I know the truth. Missy Fay's spirit channeling wasn't a sham at all. Of course it wasn't. And since you managed to reveal the truth, we're finally making a comeback. The Kulheim tradition is starting to recover at last. But with a new master wielding the power of the clan. Does she mean Maya? Aren't you the one who first called her the new master? The spiritual power of the Kulheim channeling technique is in the blood. Maya's told me the exact same thing before. We, the women of the Fey family, have always been spirit mediums. Is it just me, or do they keep changing the sprite she uses? Or she has when she tells us this in each game? It's because the power to communicate with spirits flows strongly through us. According to Maya, only the women in the family can inherit that power. The main family's bloodline stems directly from Mr. Gamey. But with each new generation, only one daughter becomes the new master. And the ones who don't become branch And the ones who don't become branch families, right? That's right. And it's always the cause of tragedy. You know, Maya had a sister too. An older sister named Mia. Oh yes, I've heard of her. What? You know about Mia? Of course. She became a lawyer in the hopes of discovering what happened to her mother. And lost her life. As a result. Do you know that what Mystic Mia is rumored to have said? She said it wasn't only because of her mother that she became a lawyer. She also didn't want to fight with her sister over the leadership of the tradition. Really? Well, she saw what happened to her own mother, Mystic Misty, as she grew up. I guess Mystic Mia got tired of seeing all the rivalry between her mother and her aunt. That's right, Mystic Fay had an elder sister too. And Misty, having superior powers, managed to usurp the master's seat from her. Mystic Misty's sister is Mystic Morgan, as you probably know. Morgan. There's a name I know well. It was a year ago, at Maya's home, Kurain village. What she did was terrible. It was all so she could make her own daughter the next master. I suppose if you know about Mystic Morgan's daughter, then you must have already realized that Iris... Huh? Iris? What's Iris got to do with any of this? That Iris is Mystic Morgan's daughter. Iris is what? Is she kidding me? Iris is Morgan Faye's daughter? By the way, are you seeing the upcoming plot twist? Did you just say that Iris is Morgan Faye's daughter? Oh, I thought you already knew. It sounded like you'd met one of Mystic Morgan's daughters already. I... I have. I know her very well. Oh? Yes, Pearls! Pearl Fay. But I always thought she was an only child. You jest! That child... she's Mystic Morgan's... I had no idea. Mystic Morgan... But she's in prison now, isn't she? Yes. Ever since she was found to be co -con a co-conspirator in a murder case last year. It was all done to set Pearls up as the next master. I see. So I've been wrong all this time. Mystic Morgan had three daughters, not two. What? Three? Yes, Iris, her twin sister, and Mystic Pearl. 
What? T twin sister? You didn't know? It all happened 20 years ago. By the way, I want to see if we already updated the thingy. No? Sadness. After the clan leadership was taken from her by a sister, Mystic Morgan's life crumbled. It wasn't many years later that Kuhan's reputation hit an all-time low. When Mystic Morgan's husband realized his wife would never become the master, he left her and the village, taking their twin daughters with them. How awful. He was a jeweler, you know. In the end, he remarried, and that's when it happened. He decided to give one of his girls up to be looked after by us here at the temple. That was Iris, you see. It's unbelievable. If Iris has a twin sister... Could it be? Could you tell me one more thing, Sister Bikini? What was the name of Iris' sister? I'm sorry, Mr. Wright. I just can't remember. All I can recall is that her father was a jeweler. Well, that's a clue, I guess. A jeweler. Thank you very much. You've helped clear up a lot of details. Pearls had two other sisters. Yes, that's right. No doubt it was all because of Mor Mystic Morgan's anger towards the main family. Anger? What do you mean? Her twin daughters were taken from her by her jeweler husband. But even that couldn't destroy her dream that a child of hers would one day lead the clan. That's why she had pearls? It seems that the incident here was a result of Mystic Morgan's anger. It was a... It was able to break free of the bars that confine her. So Iris has a twin sister. The plot thickens. But this information will be useless unless it can flush it out a bit. I need to ask more questions and get some more info. I can't remember if I have to talk to Gumshoe now or go back to Edgeworth. I think I'm gonna go back to Edgeworth first. Hey, Edgeworth. Did you know that Iris had a twin sister? What? A, a twin? You can't be serious. Sister Bikini told me, but... The problem is, she didn't know the name of the twin. There was nothing about Iris having a sister in the files I checked. Well, Iris was taken in by the temple when she was very young. Apparently, her sister was raised by her father. A jeweler, I think. A jeweler? Right. I might just know who this twin sister of hers is. Look, I'm pretty sure everybody has figured it out as soon as it was mentioned that Mor- uh, Iris had a twin. I had a feeling you'd say that. Let me guess. Her name is Dahlia Hawthorne, right? Yes, exactly. Please tell me what you know about her, Edgeworth. Please. It was my first court case six years ago. I was a greenhorn, and due to my inexperience, the defendant died. You're talking about Terry Falls, right? You know about that case? You're not the only one who noticed something about Iris and Dahlia. I checked one of Mia's old files from six years ago. Yes, Dahlia was a key witness in that case. Dahlia and Terry Falls conspired together to stage a fake kidnapping eleven years ago.
They stole a jewel worth two million dollars from Dahlia's father, a jeweler. And five years after that, she murdered her own sister, Valerie Hawthorne, to keep her from talking. Her sister? Well, her stepsister, stepsister actually. They weren't blood related. Valerie was the only daughter of Dahlia's father's second wife. Oh. And this is when she entered my life. The woman who tried to kill me. So after Terry Falls died, what happened to Dahlia? Did you check that out? There is no need. Like I said, Dahlia isn't connected with this case. Why are you so sure about that? It's simple. Dahlia Hawthorne is dead. What? Well, her metabolic processes are a matter of interest only to historians, so to speak. Are you trying to pull a Monty Python? In which case, please don't, it wasn't very funny. What do you mean by Dahlia Hawthorne's dead Edgeworth? I only just discovered this right, but... I never knew about the murder case you were involved in during your college years. Yes, well, I guess both of you were hiding something from the other. You just, now that both of you know about the various cases you were in in the past, you can get past that now. Dahlia Hawson was found guilty, thanks to the persistence of Mia Fey. At the time, Dahlia, it's like she was possessed by a demon or something. It's been six years since that ver guilty verdict was handed down, and her sentence was finally carried out. She was executed last month. Once again, this is important. For Godot. Executed? I'm sure that's a bit of a shock for you, right? and for more reasons than one. But do you understand now? She can't possibly be connected with this case. She's dead, and once someone is dead, there is no way to revive them. Well, we're not talking about reviving them. I wonder. It seems you're not aware of one other connection yet, Edgeworth. And what is that? It's about Iris and Dahlia Hawthorne's mother. What's their mother got to do with any of this? She's Morgan Fay, a spirit medium from the branch family of the Kurain Channeling Technique. Did you say Kurain Channeling Technique? D do you know something about it? Oh yes, I know it's connected with that fraudulent spirit medium. Fraudulent? I was involved in another nightmare 17 years ago. Yes, we know about that already. I was caught up in the middle of a murder investigation. The police didn't have any leads. They were stumped, and that's when they called her in. She was a very famous spirit medium and the master of a channeling school. But you know what happened. As a result of her efforts, efforts an innocent man was accused of murder. But he got off! So technically... We didn't get an innocent man convicted! She and her powers, they were all fraudulent. Edgeworth. Go to the police records room. It's all in there. All you have to do is check the DL6 incident case file and you'll know. Of course, how could I forget? Edgeworth was the victim in that case.
you're talking about the case that was eventually revealed to be related to DL6, not DL6 itself, right? Edgeworth, you'll understand someday. And then you'll see that the Kuan Chanling technique is real. So yeah, to be quite honest, I hated it as soon as it was mentioned that Iris was Morgan's daughter. And we just knew that there was going to be a twin thing. And it's really annoying. You know, I had heard some pretty cool, you know, ideas, like Iris was actually Dahlia, run away from prison and dyed hair, and similar things. That actually might have been better than the stuff that we actually got with the twin switching. And I guess I should show you Dahlia's profile. Iris had a twin sister. That's really all I know about her. That and the fact that she was taken away from her mother by her jeweler father. I don't have any idea where she is or what she's doing now. I could tell her, but she'd probably have a coronary and a half. Sounds like someone's happy. What tune is it that they're humming? No motive, no crime. No motive, no crime. Sing it with me, no motive, no crime. I remember when we used to search in the channeling room in Kurain. I don't have the rhythm for this, but then the background rhythm is throwing me off. Ooh, I love my job. Who cares if the clues I find are no good? That's not what I investi- what investigating is all about. The investigator investigates for the love of investigating. It's a passion. Good cases we have. Good cases we've lost along the way. I would have never guessed that Gumshoe was into Raggy. That was Raggy? Uh, Sorry? Hey pal. Huh? Who? Me? How long have you been there? I just got here. Oh, okay. So what are you up to, detective? I'm investigating, pal. I made a promise to Mr. Edgeworth. I promised I would find the real murder weapon. The real murder weapon? That barbed sword thing turned out to be a false lead, right? I'm giving it my best shot here, but I still haven't turned up any clues. I just found these weird scraps of paper. Looks like a letter or something. It doesn't seem to have anything to do with the case, though. A letter? About that letter you found. Don't remind me, pal. I'm busting a gut here trying to find the murder weapon. And all I find is some burnt up old letter. Burnt up old letter? Yeah, it wasn't that incinerator right outside the inner temple. The incinerator? I knew it! I knew I wasn't imagining it! There was snow on the incinerator when I first saw it. But after the incident, the snow had melted away. Which means someone used the incinerator on the night of the crime. What's up with you, pal? I've got it right here if you want to take a look. C can I? Do you mind? Sure, go nuts. I don't want it, pal. You can have it. It's all spirit mediums and masters and stuff. I bet it's got no relation to the case. Spirit mediums? It's got to be important if I mention spirit mediums and masters. I'd better give it a good look over and some serious thought. Make sure you chuck it in the trash when you're done. Littering's a crime, pal.
So, how's the investigation going, Detective Gumshoe? I don't know if I should be telling you, pal, but I guess it can't hurt. Looks like the murder took place in the inner temple garden. And they're talking, taking that bloody writing on the lantern pretty seriously back at HQ. What? You mean... I don't have the details, pal. All I know is, if you don't mind Maya, find Maya down in the sacred cavern, we're gonna be faced with one ugly situation. What kind of ugly situation are we looking at here? You got me. I don't know. They're not my words, pal. Then who said it? Mr. Godot. Godot? What do you mean by that? Why do I care? He's an asshole! So, what do you know about the real murder weapon so far? Well, it wasn't the Shichishito that was found impaled in the victim's body. Mr. Edward proved that in court today. Yes, that's true. In which case, it must have been another blade. And that's what you're running around like a headless chicken looking for, huh? Yeah, and man, it's a tiring work. But let me tell you something, pal. I'm no chicken. We've got the feather of... feather of forensics in our cap these days. We're using the department's secret weapon on this. Secret weapon? What's this secret weapon of yours? You want to know? You've got to think scientifically, okay? Alright. The murder weapon was a sword. Swords are, scientifically speaking, made of metal, right? Any questions so far? No. I know what he's gonna say, but I'll let him look smart. So what's the perfect tool for the job? Ta-da! A metal detector. Raise your hand if you didn't see this coming from a mile away. I'm raising my hand as high as possible for most of these plot twists. Well, you want to give scientific investigation a go? Huh? Me? I've been using this thing for hours now. It gets pretty boring after a while. Why don't you give it a try? I don't know. Should I help Detective Gumshout out or not? What the fuck kind of question is that? Ah, uh, once again with the pointless options. Come on, pal. It's good fun, I'm telling you. Alright then. Guess I'll give it a go. Like I said, this is the department's most advanced gadget. The absolute best. It's so sensitive you can make it cry. It's so high-tech you can skydive off it. Oh, bother. So, now I'm gonna tell you how to use it. It's possible the real murder weapon is around here somewhere, right? Sure. This is what we're trying to find out. You're right. So first, let's turn the detector on. That's the sound of the metal detector signal bouncing off of something metallic. Touch the detector and take a real good look around this courtyard with it, pal. Once you've hit something metallic, the check gauge will flash. And when that happens, touch the gauge to really give the area a good hard stare. This thing picks up metallic objects that are hidden from sight, too. Take a good look at everything. Anything that might have been whatever, whatever. It's basically the same thing from case 2 form. I'm just gonna go right here. Because I'm sick of this. This is Mr. Neem's staff, isn't it? Scientifically speaking, they're usually made of wood. But the detector is reacting to it. Yeah, but however you look at it, the thing's made of wood, alright? I don't bother investigating anything unless it looks like it might be metallic. Isn't the whole point of a metal detector to find metal where you can't see it? It's weird that this thing is causing a racket. Here, let me take a look at it. Hey, hands off! Examining evidence is a job for the- Ugh! The top is coming off! Look what you've done! You've damaged a really important piece of evidence! That's a... a, a sword? Inside the staff? Is this... 
Could it be... The murder weapon? Ooh. I'd never have guessed there'd be a sword concealed in the victim's staff. They call this kind of thing a sword cane, pal. This one's a real gem. The workmanship is really something else. Thank goodness it wasn't a cane sword, or else the victim would have stabbed her own foot. I officially give up on trying to figure out how Gumshoe's mind works. If the real scene of the crime was the inner temple garden, then why was the sword used to kill the victim found in the main hall courtyard? Did you read the case proceedings? You know, with Iris removing the murder weapon, and with the murder weapon acting as a plug on the wound, stuff like that. Hey, Gumshoe. Who knows about the hidden sword? No one. Even the police didn't know about this until I discovered it just now. Well, as I say, there's no team in Gumshoe. It doesn't look like there are any traces of blood on it. Then I guess this isn't a murder weapon, huh? No, no, no. I'm sure someone just wiped it off after the murder. Yeah, of course. This thing's definitely the murder weapon. Great job, pal. Okay. I'm just gonna quick point something out here. Remember how I said that it was weird? Or at least that it was sort of important that the staff only had Elise or Misty's fingerprints on it? Considering Iris pulled the weapon out, her fingerprint should be on it. Sure, you might say, well, she wiped it off. Yes, she wiped the blood off. She probably wiped the handle to get rid of her fingerprints. Wouldn't that also cause Elise's, you know, fingerprints to disappear? So technically, there either shouldn't be any fingerprints on this, or we have to think that Iris pulled the weapon out, wiped off the blood and the fingerprints, clicked it back together, put it into Elise's hand so that her fingerprints are on it, and then put it on the ground. Which is just stupid. That's what I wanted to say about the murder weapon. It's about the same length as the Shichishito, too. This must be the murder weapon. Okay, I'm gonna run over to forensics. There's gotta be some traces of blood left, even if most of it has been wiped off. See you later, pal. Wait up, detective. Huh? What is it, pal? I'm a pretty busy guy right now, you know. You're going to get that stuff analyzed, right? Would you mind holding off for just a while? What are you talking about, pal? Please. Just until we find Maya. Maya? What's this got to do with her? I don't know, but I'm starting to get a really bad feeling in the pit of my stomach. How so? Look, Maya's trapped inside the sacred cavern right now, and... Well, we don't even know if she's okay or not. The more evidence and testimony I hear, the more uneasy I feel. You don't think? Maya's but Please, detective! Let's just wait until we can get inside the sacred cavern. You're... looking kind of origin there. Okay, okay, just stop it with that face, pal. One thing, though. This staff's secret trick. Let's keep it between you and me, alright? If it gets out that we knew about it and didn't say anything, we're finished. I got it. This is just a regular, run-of-the-mill staff. Got it? No, you take good care of it, pal. Thank you, detective. Don't worry. She'll be fine. Gumshoe. You know, there's a place at the base of this mountain that has some really good pasta. How about I take you there when you find Maya, huh, pal? Sure, thanks. Gumshoe is such a kind person. What was Elise Donim doing with a staff like this in the first place?
anyway, I'm pretty sure we have everything we need for Pearl Cyclock. I was expecting Larry and Pearls to be here. I guess I must have gone to go collect firewood. Guess I'll have to check back later. Oh, I thought you would be here. Guess I have to go to the end temple first. I think I had everything for her, so I'll try it out. I think it's time you told the truth about what you were doing on that night. You said you were in your room at Hasakura Temple the entire time. Do you still claim that to be the truth? Yes, that's where I was. Iris, I believe you're innocent. That's why I want to believe what you're telling me, too. But I can't. Because this person saw you somewhere else on the night of the murder. I keep knocking into the microphone today. I'm talking about Sister Bikini, of course. Sister Bikini... Her testimony in court today was very clear. That night, I was helping an acolyte with a training in the Inter Temple. But... Well, as you can see, my back likes to act up. Violently. So uh, I left Iris to help the acolyte and returned to Hasakura Temple. Sister Bikini didn't just see you, she spoke with you. You two talked about Maya's training that night. So you see, Iris, you were there at the Inner Temple on the night of the murder. That's very impressive, Mr. Wright. The acolyte's actual training was due to start after 10 o'clock that night. I left the main hall early, so I wouldn't be late. What time was that? Let me see... It takes about 20 minutes to walk between the main hall and the inner temple. So I would have left at about 9.40 p.m., I think. I'm sorry, Iris, but lying just doesn't suit you. Huh? Now, you say you left the main hall at 9.40 p.m., but what you say doesn't add up with this. You yourself testified to the contrary, don't you remember? You said you rang the lights out bell at 10 o'clock that night. Plus, only moments before you rang that bell, you were seen at the main hall by the most reliable witness I have. Who's that? Me. Mr. Wright. We even spoke a little that evening. That's when you gave me this. Surely you haven't forgotten. No, that's right. I remember. And that brings us to another puzzling fact, Iris. At 10 o'clock in the night of the murder, you were seen in two different places at the same time. It's time you told me exactly what's been going on, Iris. So far, I've managed to prove two things. First, on the night of the incident, you were at the inner temple. And second, at the exact same time, you were ringing the bell at Hasakura Temple. There's only one possible explanation for this apparent impossibility. On the night of the incident, you were seen in two different places at the same time. Which means, there must have been two of you. I can't think of any other explanation, Iris. But that's crazy! How could that be? There's only one of me. It's impossible. Impossible? I wonder. The way you're trembling certainly seems to su suggest otherwise. You're seriously trying to suggest there's more than one of me? Then show me the evidence. Show me something that proves there is more than one of me. I have a firm grasp of the situation now, Iris. You have a sister, don't you? A twin sister, perhaps. That's right. Dahlia Hawthorne. A woman I know only too well. I had no idea you knew of her. Very impressive, Mr. Wright. But... she's no longer... 
Yes, I know. Her sentence was carried out recently, wasn't it? I'm sorry. Thank you. There's no need to explain now, is there, Iris? The second you who was here at the temple on the night of the murder. It was your twin sister, Dahlia. But, but you just said it yourself a second ago. My sister's dead. Have you forgotten that? Have you forgotten this, Iris? This is a channeling dojo, a training ground of the Kuran channeling technique. That night, someone channeled Dahlia's spirit, and you knew about it. And that's the secret you've been trying to hide from me. By the way, since we figured out that, yes, Iris has the twin sister of Dahlia, this is where I got to the, the idea, this is Dahlia being channeled by Maya. I don't care if you think this is a spoiler. It's really not if you put a bit of logic into this case. So, yeah. I... I was in the room. In my room in the main hall that night. As soon as I heard that I had been spotted at the inner temple, I knew. I knew it was my sister. Dahlia, the other half of me who passed away last month. Just as I suspected. The iris that Sister Bikini saw at the inner temple on the night of the murder. It was Dahlia. Why didn't you tell me this before? Because... Because my sister always does the right thing. Excuse me? And because I mustn't get in the way of what she's trying to do. I already betrayed her once before. I can't do it again. You betrayed her? What do you mean? That's why I... I have to accept I may be found guilty. It's the only way. What is she talking about? You know about it, don't you, Mr. Wright? About the fake kidnapping that took place here on Eagle Mountain 11 years ago? That was the start of it all. It twisted her entire destiny. She started to commit crime after crime, and in the end she... she lost her life. It's all because I betrayed her. How did you betray her, Iris? It was no coincidence that Eagle Mountain is where the exchange was to take place. After all, I... I helped plan the whole thing. What? But I got scared, so I ran away. What are you talking about? Why would you help her? Stealing two million dollars from your own father. That's awful. I promised. I promised that I'd help. And... She didn't do it for the money. It was revenge on our father. R revenge? What do you mean by revenge? He was a hideous man. He threw our mother away and sent her to hell. Her mother? She must be talking about Morgan Fay. Yes, because they both had absolutely other mothers. Our mother was the eldest daughter of the main branch of the Fa Fay family. The main family had a lot of influence on many business and political circuits at the time. As the eldest daughter, our mother was said to inherit all of that as the next master. That's the reason our father married our mother in the first place, for power. I thought the women were important in Kuan. Who cares about the husband of the matter of the master? The master herself is still important. But his plan backfired. Because our mother's sister took it off from her, she took over as the master of Kuan. That would be Misty Fay, Maya's mother. But before long, the credibility of the Kuran tradition hit rock bottom. The new master, Mystic Misty Fei, made a terrible mistake. It 
was during the investigation of the DL6 incident. After that happened, our father took me and my twin sister away, leaving our mother and our home behind. He hated the place. He said it was a hick dive, and that he had no reason to stay there. And that's when you came here to Hasakura Temple? Yes. The woman my father took as his next wife already had a daughter, Valerie. I... I had no place in this new family, you see? And I haven't seen my mother once since then. Having the master's seed stolen from her and being rejected by her own family. I've heard she's been very battered spiritually and emotionally. I think I'm finally beginning to see how the pieces fit together. I have asked her everything I can in my capacity as a prosecutor. This incident, everything related to it goes back to the history of the Fae Clan. That's what it looks like. Iris, there's just one more thing I want, to, want you to tell me. What is it? During the incidents in which your sister, Dolly Hawthorne, poisoned a lawyer, she began relations with a certain college student in order to hide the evidence. That college student... Have you heard anything about him? Well, I did hear one thing. She said she hated his guts. I see. Thank you for your help. You're welcome. Hurry up, Phoenix Wright! There is still much to investigate! Leave these locks to me. I'll open them for you, I promise. Thank you. I suppose I'd better continue my investigation. There's still one giant secret left to unlock. Pearl Cyclock. Sure, we are over an hour already. <laughs> but I think... After unlocking Pearl's Cyclops and finding out the truth, what she did, then this section will be over. And then we continue on to the trial. Look at that. They really did make a fire right in front of the shack. Oh, Mr. Nick. Ha! Ah, you're too late, Nick! If you came here for one of our potatoes, we've already polished them all off! I think I've pretty much got all the evidence I need. Mm. Now I just need to find out what Pearls is hiding. My voice hurts. <laughs> After dinner on the... <clears throat> After dinner on the night of the murder, you were supposed to be in, in Donim's room reading a book together, correct? Yes, I was so happy when she invited me. But I didn't go in the end. You didn't go? No, there was somewhere else I had to go instead. I was so worried I I had to go. I didn't know what to do with myself. I was so nervous. So Pearls never went to Miss Donim's room. Because she was too worried about something or someone else. Pearls? On the night of the murder, you went to this place, didn't you? You went here, didn't you, Pearl? Looks like she's still not going to open up to me. This is where you went because you were so worried, right? Then the next question is, who or what were you so worried about? Now, I'm going to take a guess, and you can tell me if I'm right or wrong, okay? Y you mean you know? If I'm right, will you tell me the whole truth? Uh, okay. You went to this place for one very simple reason, and that is this. It's obvious what you were so worried about, Pearls. It was Maya, wasn't it? You knew the training Maya was undertaking was dangerous. After all, it was a special course. I signed up for your special course! Well, my, my, my. 
Quite brave of you, considering how cold it is. Young people can be so reckless with their health. Don't blame me if you become one of those to channel. <laughs> Sister Bikini scared you with what she said, didn't she? And because it was you who introduced Hazakura Temple to Maya in the first place, you felt responsible, didn't you? Thinking about what could happen to Mystic Maya made me more and more worried. I couldn't sit still at all. That's why I decided to go and find out how she was doing at the Inner Temple. Then we're clear now that you went to the Inner Temple that night, Pearls. What's not clear is what happened after that. About what time was it when you headed over to the Inner Temple? Uh, it was probably around 9.30 when I left the main hall. I heard the real training was supposed to start at 10. I wanted to get there before it started. But there was so much snow, so I didn't get there until after 10. Until after 10? How did you know what time it was? Because I heard the bell ring for Lights Out. She heard the Lights Out bell? The Hazukua Temple bell is pretty small though, isn't it? You must have really good hearing. I, I was really trying to pick up the sound of that bell, that's all. I didn't want to miss it. That would be terrible. She was trying to hear the bell? Tommy Pearls. Why were you so worried about hearing that bell? I think I know why. The reason you were so worried about the bell was because of this. You were given some instructions to follow for that night, weren't you? I presume you recognize these pieces of paper? W where did you... And the incinerator at the Ender Temple. Pearls? You were following the instructions in this letter that night, weren't you? That's why you couldn't afford to miss the sound of the lights out bell. I, I am speechless, Mr. Nick. You're amazing. These instructions that were found in the incinerator, I believe they were written for you, Pearls. For me? I, uh, no. As you can see, a large portion has been burned. But the last section is still fairly legible. As soon as you hear the lights out bell, you must channel her spirit. Who was it, Pearls? Whose spirit were you supposed to be channeling? Taking into account the author of the note and their purpose for writing it. Whose spirit would Pearls have been trying to channel? Don't overthink it, Phoenix. It's pretty obvious who Pearls was supposed to channel. The person you were trying to channel that night, Pearls. It was Dahlia Hawthorne, wasn't it? That was the name that was in the letter. It's just as I suspected. It wasn't Iris who Sister Bikini met at the inner temple that night. It was Dahlia Hawthorne. Do you know anything about her pearls? Do you know what kind of woman Dahlia Hawthorne was? No. I've never heard of anyone by that name before reading those instructions. I thought so. Pearls doesn't have a clue. She doesn't know that Dahlia is her sister. About the instructions in the letter I found Pearls. Who wrote them? Um. Whoever it was asked you to channel the spirit of someone you've never heard of. You must have quite a lot of respect for them. After all, you followed their instructions without question. So here's my next question. Who wrote this set of instructions for you to follow? Pearls? I have to wonder about something. You didn't have any idea what these instructions meant, did you? But you followed them to the letter regardless. Why? Because it was your own mother who asked you. That's why. How did you... I figured it out. The person who wrote you this letter was your own mother, Morgan Fay. Oh, 
All right, Pearls. It's time you started telling me the truth. Why is she holding back from me? I don't like this. D -d don't believe this. I just got with child. Huh? If she tried to say I followed these instructions, I'd like to see some proof. What? Because I, I d don't see you have any. Mm. She'd say anything rather than admit to carrying out those instructions. I guess I'll have to produce some more evidence then. One more thing should do it. Alright, Pearls. We both know someone carried out these instructions on the night of the murder. But you're right. There's no evidence that it proves it was you. I, I, I knew it. But I do know that whoever did it was a child. Uh, how do you know that? It couldn't have been an adult. No adult would have made a simple mistake like that. Simple mistake? What do you mean by that? I'm sure you thought you were carefully following the instructions you've been given. But you misunderstood some of the words, and this is the evidence that proves it. It was you who splattered gray beyond the hanging scroll, wasn't it? What, why would I do something like... Do you remember what was written in that letter? Gravely roast the master in the fires of Hades and bring our vengeance to fruition. But you didn't know how to read the words gravely and roast, among others, right? How do you know that? Remember the conversation you had with Miss Donim on the night of the murder? Perhaps we can read some books together. Really? I'd love to. I'm... I'm not very good at reading. Well then, would you like to practice reading with me? Miss Elise, so, for example, how do you read this? It says gravely. That's kind of a tough word. Sure, Mr. Ning taught you how to read gravely and roast. But what she didn't teach you is what they meant. Gravely sounds like grape to me and the only roast I could think of was with food. And that's why you did it. That's why you covered the picture of the master and gravy from that night, night's pot roast. To be honest, I didn't think it was a bit strange. I guess I really did get the wrong idea. Just a tiny bit. I really am useless. I didn't even manage to burn the letter properly as my mother had asked me. Such a single thing. I couldn't even do it right. I, after dinner that night, I did go to the inner temple with the pot full of leftover gravy. The gravy? I saw the picture on the hanging scroll near the sacred cavern. I was sure it was the Master of Corn, like it said in the letter. I see. And then? Well, it was already way past ten when I got there because of all the snow. So I went to the inner temple guest area. The guest area? Yes, I thought I could wait there until the training was over. Why didn't you just go to the training hall? Because Mystic Maya's main training had already started, and I couldn't interrupt it. So I just stayed where I was and prayed for it to get through it. But then I... Pearls, did you fall asleep? I'm sorry, I didn't mean to. I just couldn't help it. Hey, don't worry about it, Pearl. Who cares if you fell asleep? I fell asleep waiting for Iris, too. It happens. Anyway... Then you found yourself trapped at the inner temple? Yes. When I woke up, it was morning. I tried to not cry, but... Dusky Bridge wasn't there anymore, and there was no one in the training hall. I thought everyone had left me because I overslept. I threw the letter into the incinerator. And I heated up the leftover gravy and... and let off some steam by chucking the gravy on the scroll while you cried. Well, it's one way to get rid of emotion.
It must have been pretty scary for you, Pearl. I know what it's like. Nick used to leave me behind when I fell asleep at school, too. Don't equate something so trivial with her experience, Larry. It was written right in my mother's letter. It said, as soon as you hear the lights out, Bill, you must channel her spirit. I was on my way over to the inner temple when I heard the bell ring. So you channeled Dahlia Hawthorne's spirit? No. I tried, but I couldn't do it. You couldn't do it? I've never failed at channeling someone. This is the first time it's happened. I tried and tried and tried. Yesterday, this morning, the whole time. But I just couldn't do it. Don't let it get you down, Pearls. It's all a workout. If you want, come flying through the sky for you. Whoosh! Just like that! So she never managed to channel the spirit. Is that why you think your spiritual powers are gone? Yes, I don't know what to do. Isn't there any other explanation for why you couldn't channel a spirit? I suppose there's one other possibility. It's not very likely, though. Could you tell me what it is anyway? It could happen if someone else was already channeling the same spirit. Someone else? What do you mean? Well, there's only one of each spirit, right? Yep, it's like dating a girl, Nikki. You can't see a hot chick if she's already taken. Then that would mean on the night of the murder, someone else channeled her spirit before Pearls could. Someone else channeled the spirit of Dahlia Hawthorne. I'm a failure. I couldn't even grant my mother's final wish. Her final wish? Yes, this letter. This is my last wish, she said. So make sure you follow the instructions carefully. This letter... I definitely need to find out more about it. My mother has gone to a place called a penitentiary. Yeah, I know, Pearls. I visit her every month. And last month, she told me... The time we've been waiting for has come, Pearl. There's something I need you to do for me. I hid a letter for you at her home before they brought me here. I want you to read it and do exactly what it says. It's for the good of the Fey Clan, my angel. You'll be doing a great thing. Now, listen carefully, and I'll tell you where the letter's hidden. My mother's always nice to me. I love her very much. Yeah, moms will do anything for the kids, right? She said it was for the good of the Fey Clan, so I knew I had to help her. I mean, Mystic Maya's part of the Fey Clan, so it had to be good for her, too. That's right, isn't it, Mr. Nick? Uh, I guess so, yeah. There was a picture with her letter, too. A picture? Of Miss Dahlia Hawthorne. Usually, a picture is enough to tell someone's spirit, but this time... Pretty weird, huh? Like Larry knows anything about this stuff. There's something else that was strange about my mother's letter. The seal on it was broken, and someone had already opened it once before. That sure is pretty strange. Someone had opened it already? Thanks, Pearls. You really helped me out. You're very welcome. My mother is watching over us. So I'm sure Mystic Maya will be alright. Look at that innocent smile on her face. What am I supposed to say to her? Ugh! Finally figured it out, have you, Trite? You finally realized how terrible of a crime being painfully oblivious is. You know what, Phoenix? The Eagle River is right next to your left. Dunk his head underneath! Godot! 
The entrance to the sacred cabin looks like a freaking puzzle workshop. I guess he's talking about Iris on the lock-breaking effort. But it's all a waste of time. Why do you say that? Because Maya Faye isn't coming back. What? You don't know what you're talking about. How can you say something like that? It was your job to protect her trite. No, it wasn't! Women can take care of, herself, of themselves just fine, Godot! Things have changed in the six years that you were comatose dead or whatever the fuck you want to call that. I'm sure women were care taking care of themselves before you fell into that coma thing anyway. God, I hate you. Just like it was your job to protect Mia Faye. I don't know, consider you were supposedly her boyfriend, shouldn't you have protected her? I.e. by not drinking something close to the vicinity of someone who you were pretty sure had committed a murder before. Moron. Two sisters caught up in the worst circumstances. I realize that, but... And you were the only one who was by their sides. You know what? I think I am going to buy a stress ball. And then I'm just going to clench that. You were the only one who could have saved them. I'm just going to grip this package of tissues. It's the only thing I can do right now. But I didn't know anything about what's going on. <laughs> what did I just say, Trite? Being oblivious is a heinous crime in itself. Well, how the fuck was he supposed to know that Mia was investigating Red White? He never even heard of that fucker before. So how the hell was he supposed to know that she was investigating him, that he was getting on to her, or that he was contemplating killing her? And as for Maya... He doesn't know what the hell was going on before. You're the asshole that read the letter first. Yes, spoilers. Godot read the letter. <sighs> I don't care if he's misplacing his sorrow or anger. At least Hope was still likable and understandable considering his age in Final Fantasy XIII when he did the same thing. Godot is too old to do this. Tomorrow. We'll settle everything in court tomorrow. Once and for all. Mr. Nick, is, is what the man just said true? It'll be alright, Pearls. I'm sure Maya's alive. You'll see for yourself tomorrow. Uh, yeah, that's right. I know I can trust you, Mr. Nick. Oh man, I need to give my voice a break, and I need... Oh god, no! Don't you fucking talk, too! Anyway, I need to give my voice a break. I'm going to have some ice cream and relax and all. So, I'll see you next time when we start the next t day of the trial and we actually get to finish this goddamn case. <laughs>